Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eterno. Welcome back to my game engine series. So last time we took a look at setting up pre-make for our kind of build system, our project generation system. Make sure you check out that video if you haven't already. And today we're going to have a good old fashioned kind of planning session in which we plan what we're going to do next, which is going to be to kind of create an event system for our engine so that we can deal with window events that we will have to receive, such as, you know, the window being closed, the window being resized, input events such as mouse events or keyboard events. Whenever stuff like that happens in our engine, we want our application to kind of become aware of it and have a chance to handle it and just basically have Hazel be aware that things are happening to it. So that's what today is going to kind of be about. First of all, I just want to thank all of the patrons that make this series possible. If you guys aren't supporting the series, you can go to patreon.com forward slash the churno. Um, you'll get these videos one week early as well as access to a private development branch in which everything we're going to talk about today and many episodes in the future is already written. Um, and obviously it just helps support the series and that's why these videos are here for everyone else. So huge thank you to everyone as always. Okay, so event systems, let's talk about this. This is one of my favorite things to write um, just because uh, it's it's quite, the way it links together is quite satisfying and it's just, it's just something that does need to be done. Um, sometimes like in the past, I used to maybe write like a whole window system first and then deal with events, but it's just, there's no point in doing that. You might as well get the event system done so that when you get, get to the point of actually writing your window, um, you can already kind of dispatch all your events and everything will just work and everything's going to be great. Um, because kind of, you can write a window system, an entire renderer without even dealing with events at all. But then as soon as you start saying that, oh, I want a camera that I can move around using the mouse and keyboard or whatever, you start being like, oh, well, you know, to do this properly, I have to spend like a while now writing a whole event system. So we're going to get all of that out of the way kind of immediately so that then when we actually do build up a window, um, we can deal with everything really easily. So we're going to go to the drawing board um, and see exactly how all this is going to fit together. Okay, so at the moment we have something that's called an application. Now this is our kind of application class, um, which is kind of like our central really class for, for a lot of things. I mean, primarily this is kind of a representation of our actual Hazel application. Uh, like in terms of important things it contains, I mean, the run loop is probably one of the biggest things, which means that essentially it contains the, the loop that keeps everything running and keeps updating kind of our game all the time. Um, but also this being the central kind of hub for things, it also needs to be able to receive events so that it can dispatch them eventually to something called a layer, um, to all of the layers in our games. Now, Layers are something that we'll talk about in the future, so I won't mention them too much um, because we'll have a separate video on that. And also they're not really 100% required by the scope of what we're gonna be um, implementing in terms of this event system. So they're just something for the future. Um, but just know that kind of the application will eventually propagate events to layers so that they can kind of deal with that. So in terms of our application though, um, we have an application. Uh, this needs to be able to receive events. So how does all of that work? Well, since we're, since we're specifically talking about window events, let's kind of draw a little window class that we might have here um, and then see how that communication is going to work. So our window class is a representation of our actual window that kind of makes up our application. So this is literally like, you know, a Windows kind of window with like a title bar um, and like, you know, we might have like a triangle rendering and all that stuff um, over here. And every time we receive events in this window, whether it be kind of the fact that a resize has taken place, someone's hit the close button, um, we have kind of mouse move events or whatever, um, and all that stuff, whenever that stuff happens, um, and you know, keyboard events, whatever, all that, when, when all that stuff happens, our kind of windowing library or just the Win32 API or whatever we're using will receive an event. And then once that event happens inside that window class, we need a way of communicating that back to application. But guess what? we don't actually want to tie our application to the window class. So the window class should not be aware of our application class at all. The application class kind of creates a window, right? So it's clearly kind of aware of that, right? But I don't want the window class actually having any knowledge of application. That's not really a, a link that should exist. Um, so what we need to do actually is create some kind of method for kind of messaging back all of these events to the application so the application can kind of deal with them. 
And because the application creates a window, it has the ability obviously to kind of set up all of that kind of messaging system. So long story short, this is what happens. When an event occurs inside our actual window, this window class will receive an event callback, right? And then what it has to do is construct essentially a Hazel event and then somehow propagate it back to application. Okay, so let's talk about the details of that. So first of all, Hazel event, right? What do we need? Well, we need some kind of event class, right? An event system really, which contains all the details required by an event that has occurred. So a mouse click, right? I've just moved my mouse and I've clicked it over here. What kind of information do we need? Well, we definitely need kind of the X and Y position of that click, as well as which button was pressed, right? Um, and then what we can do with that information is create something called a mouse button pressed event, which I'm definitely not gonna write out, but we create a mouse button pressed event, right? Which is essentially just a struct which contains this position and this button. And once we've created that, which is kind of our own custom data type, we need a way to actually send that data over to application. So that, so we kind of, everything kind of ties back to that link and how it works. Well, we don't want window to actually hold like an application pointer or something like that. Um, but instead what we want to do is essentially give the opportunity for this application to provide window with a callback. Now, this can be something as simple as just a function pointer. In fact, we'll kind of deal with that um, first to begin with, and then we can talk about more abstract ways of actually dealing with this. But essentially what happens is when we create a window from our application class, we're also going to create, we're also going to set a callback to that window class, an event callback, so that every time that this window gets an event, it can check to see if the callback is present, right? So if the callback isn't null, and if the callback isn't null, it's going to call the callback with this event data, okay? And then since basically application will have a function called on event, which might, you know, take in something like an event reference, right? It's going to call this function from window, okay? So window doesn't actually know about application, but if we set a callback, window does know about this function. And so window will call this function with this kind of data. And then suddenly application, which has an on event function and on event method on itself, right? This will get called with all of the event data. Now, this is kind of something known as like a blocking event. So the reason that kind of is the case is because, you know, when we do receive that mouse event, that mouse button pressed event, we construct it probably on the stack right there. And then we immediately call this function. So it's not, it kind of, you know, pauses all of the other events while we deal with this event. Um, and so that's why it's kind of called a blocking event. Now, in the future, you could create something like a buffered event system, which basically says that it kind of, you know, grabs this information, queues it, stores the data elsewhere, proceeds to other events, and then maybe once per frame, we kind of go through that queue of events, like an event queue, um, and we just kind of dispatch and handle all of them there instead of doing it immediately upon receiving the event. But I find that that's something that doesn't necessarily need to be implemented straight away in an engine. Um, we can kind of just deal with this and this is a lot simpler. So if we do kind of, that, that is maybe something to explore in the future um, when things get a little bit more complicated and we want a little bit more control about um, on kind of, you know, how our, our engine flows and to not just block the whole engine every time an event occurs until it's been fully handled by everything in our application. Um, so like a buffered event, queue may end up being a better idea in the future. But for now, um, this is totally fine. Okay, so now that it's received that, um, it can kind of dispatch the event to anything that requires it. So for example, um, you know, we talked about the layer stack that we had earlier. Um, it can kind of propagate that event down the layer stack so that all the layers have a chance to kind of receive that mouse button, press event and handle it and maybe block further layers from receiving that event um, if the need, uh, if, if need be. Um, but that's kind of it. You know, our application is now aware of an event that's occurred from our window. Um, just via kind of that function pointer. Now, instead of having like a function pointer or like an, you know, STD function or something like that, that we set on window, you could essentially create um, like an event listener interface called like I event listener or something. And then maybe window could have like an array um, or some kind of like, uh, you know, container of I event listeners. And then every time an event occurs, it simply goes through that kind of collection of I event listeners and then it calls on event. Right, so application itself could end up kind of being, you know, an I event listener, 
um, because it listens to events, as would, uh, you know, all the layers. Um, and so because it kind of needs to implement that interface, it would then implement on event and then set itself kind of as an I event listener to window, which might have, you know, I event listener, you know, just like an array of them or whatever. Um, and then this would kind of go through all of the I event listeners and actually call their on event function. So you could do something like that. It's a little bit more abstract, a little bit more kind of um, high level, I guess, and just having like std function or like a raw function pointer or something like that. But that kind of gets the job done. It doesn't matter. Those are kind of all implementation details. So in terms of what we actually have to do right now, then um, what we need to do before this kind of window even exists is we probably need to make something called an I event listener. We need to make this whole kind of event system. So we actually need to create all the data we need for events. So every type of event, you know, we'll have like a base event type. And then every type of event of event will kind of you know stem stem down from there essentially. So we'll have all of our window events like resize and close. We'll have all of our input events: mouse button pressed, mouse moved, key pressed, key released, that kind of stuff. Um, and then we could also have actual application events if we wanted to. So for example, application and these originate from applications. So stuff like run loop events, right? So on update, on tick, on render, all of those kind of events, instead of being just propagated immediately from the kind of application uh, class, they could actually be kind of dispatched as events. And then layers could, for example, listen to on update or whatever, or just, just listen to app update, app tick events, whatever. And then if they've chosen to, they could kind of handle it there. So that's this kind of event system will, will allow for that as well. But basically what I'm saying is we need to construct all of the kind of event classes that we have um, and then we also want to have, you know, certain debug data as well. So for example, maybe um, like event names and stuff like that. We also want, you know, event categories. So there's a few different things that we need to do. This kind of becomes um, a little bit more complicated. We also want something called an event dispatcher, which basically on this on event class, on this kind of on event function, which contains this kind of event reference, we want to be able to kind of dispatch that event to maybe a different function based on its type. So we might end up having something like an, on mouse, you know, moved uh, function, which takes specifically like a mouse move event or something like that. Um, and then blah, 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 I'm trying to write fast. Um, and then kind of what happens is if this event type ends up being a mouse move event, then we want to automatically kind of dispatch it to this function automatically, like without having to do any kind of really heavy code or whatever um, right there in the on event function to find out what the type is and all of that. Um, so that can be achieved fairly simply by just creating kind of an, an event dispatcher little class, which is just wraps an event and then just figures out its type and dispatches it to a given function pointer if it matches the right type. Um, so things like that, right? Um, that's what we need to write basically straight away. And that's what we'll do next episode. Um, and then from there, um, we can probably start creating our window class. Um, and then, you know, hooking, hooking that up with the event system um, and being able to kind of call back to the application class and then provide all the event details that we actually need. So that's the plan. Um, I think it sounds pretty good. Those are kind of our next steps for Hazel. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's our whole kind of event system that we have to actually write, um, along with kind of how we're going to communicate all of those events back to application and then propagate them to our kind of layer stack. Um, yeah, I love kind of writing this stuff. Should be a lot of fun. Hopefully we can actually squeeze in all of these event types as well as the application and I event list and stuff all in one episode, we'll see. Next episode might end up being quite long. Um, but yeah, hope you guys kind of enjoy these planning videos. It's something that is 100% necessary. And I think just kind of talking about what we're actually going to do, um, instead of just kind of doing it is really important. Cause remember this series is kind of here for you guys to learn, not necessarily to just kind of watch me write an engine without really saying much and just, you know, kind of not talking about, because what I like to talk about in this series is why I make the decisions that I do make. Um, and kind of how all of this fits together so that you guys kind of understand the actual architecture of an engine and all of that stuff. Anyway, leave your thoughts um, below as to what I've kind of described here in my design. Keep in mind that, um, you know, none of this is set in stone. Uh, if someone says, hey, you should do it this way, you know, we can talk about that. We can discuss that. Um, you know, you can submit like a pull request or something, for example, maybe too early to do that nowadays because um, the repository is quite you know, bland and quite kind of bare right now. But in the future, you know, you can always submit a pull request and we can always discuss that. There's actually been a few already that we've discussed on the GitHub repository, link will be in the description below. Um, 
but yeah, um, we can always talk about this stuff. Um, and especially in these design sessions, it's a good idea, you know, in a real kind of software team, what happens is someone will basically give a little presentation like I've just done. Um, and then we can kind of sit around in the group and be like, you know, try and poke holes in it and try and be like, yeah, but what happens in this scenario? What happens in that scenario? Um, you know, maybe a better way of doing it would be this way, or have you thought about, you know, performance or like client kind of API requirements or just, there's all this stuff to consider. So, um, that's why these whole design sessions are really, really important. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit the like button. You can also help support the series by going to patreon.com forward slash the churno. You'll get the next video already. If you're watching this live on YouTube and it's public, the next video is actually already out. So you can already see me implementing all this stuff right now. If you just go on over to patreon.com forward slash the churno. And also you'll, I mean, for the patrons as well, in my private development branch, this whole event system, everything I've described here has been around for like weeks. So you can definitely check that out if you're interested to kind of surge ahead in the series and see what's coming, as well as just kind of get all the code to play around with before it even kind of gets explained or goes live. I hope to see you guys in the, in the next video where we're actually gonna start implementing this stuff. It's gonna be really exciting. Until then, goodbye.